Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So in the remaining 10 minutes, we're really going to... And this, is, this post is fantastic. I don't want to bust your bubble, but this post is fantastic. But in fact, rid rhythm, that's, that's spelled wrong. That's totally wrong. No, I, no. See, that was me being hilarious. Uh, so what we'll do, what we'll do, anytime I'm being hilarious, I'll, that's the sign for you to laugh politely and make me feel funny. Um, I know we did this last time. This is really horrible for me because I've been trained to talk to everybody in the room. Uh, is it possible for the people just on the very outside to come in a little bit? Because otherwise I'm going to get whiplash. I'll be puking all the way to South by Southwest. I know it's horrible. I hate it when people come on stage and say, everybody down the front, let's rock. But this is not that. Th thank you. Um, so should, do I need to tell you a little bit about me to start this? All right, um, look, I'll play you this. I might talk over it, I might stop it. But anytime I talk to anybody, students, artists, idiots, drug addicts, whatever, um, I'm making a call to consider the source of any information that's being given to you, right? It's just common sense. So in the light of that, I should tell you a little bit about me. For my time with Public Image Limited, featuring Johnny Rotten of the Sex Pistols to the Suicide Girls from American Bandstand. Hello. What's your name, please? Martin Atkins. Welcome. To MTV. From Nine Inch Nails to Pigface. Since 1979, I've been... Yeah, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, Public Image Limited, Killing Joke Ministry, Nine Inch Nails, Pigface. I have a record label called Invisible that's 21 years old today. Thank you for the cake. Um, that was a lie, sorry. Uh, we released about 350 albums. I have a music publishing company that controls 3,000 titles, a recording studio. Been to China twice. I was just in Brazil. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. Um, I made a documentary in China, which just won an award. I turned 50 last year. I've got four kids. Uh, yeah, I'm a bad DJ. That's my shit. That's what I do. So. Um, let's have a look quickly at things that are happening and changing, and then we'll get into packaging, right? Uh, MySpace, is anybody still MySpacing? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's old. It's, it's so yesterday, literally, but there's still six million bands on MySpace. We'd be stupid to ignore it if we're marketing anything to people in bands. Everybody's Facebooking, I assume, by your deafening response. Yeah. Who's Twittering? Is everybody Twittering or tweeting? Or tw yeah. Google Buzz isn't, we were talking about this earlier, not much of a buzz, really, is it? It should be Google lukewarm. Not really quite sure yet what it is. Trying to fuck with Facebook and failing. Um, Form Spring is like an anonymous. Facebook thing? Is anybody form springing? Is that what it's called? Is it cool? Are you loving it? It's starting to piss me off. I, I'm, like, I'm Twittering, I'm Facebooking, I'm forgetting my MySpace, AOL, sending postcards to people religiously. Too mogul. I mention that because it's a very cool uh, platform to upload video to multiple locations. Is anybody using Tube mogul? Whoa, so that, that's the price of admission right there, isn't it? That English guy was going on and on a bit, but fucking hell, two mogul would save my life. Um, <laughs> instead of uploading to YouTube, and everybody should have a YouTube account because that's how we communicate visually, 
um, you upload to TubeMogul and it will go to, your video will go to like 30 locations. It takes a little bit of time to set up. It didn't take me any time at all because Katie set it up for me. But it just, boom, I just uploaded a video this afternoon. It went everywhere. Hootsuite is a way to control multiple Twitter accounts so you can have a conversation with yourself about how amazing you are. Really? Yes. No. Go on. Right. Absolutely. So if anybody accidentally discovers you and joins the conversation, they think they're involved with somebody amazing. Wimp I include because I was just in Norway and there's a new Norwegian-centric music site and they decided to call it Wimp. I mean, come on. Uh, anyway, uh, EMI I mentioned because they're doomed. Is it the last major label? Are there any others that I forgot about? But they're about to bite it. They're selling Abbey Road Studios. Pink Floyd are suing them. How embarrassing is that to be sued by Pink Floyd? <laughs> right? It's like something from the 70s has come up from the depths and is suing us. Um, and we talked about the Live Nation Ticketmaster merger uh, in a couple of uh, Billy's classes today. Um, good thing, bad thing. Who thinks it's good? Uh, hello? Hello? Who thinks it's bad? Yeah, see, I think it's fucking great. Because when two huge monolithic corporations merge together to make one giant huge monolithic corporation, great. Look at, look at what you guys are doing. You're printing posters. You're all doing these shows. It's $3 to get in. You get this. There's a bus. You can get drunk. You're, you're entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurs think on a dime. We're going to do this. There's a bunch of French people. Ooh la la. Fucking hell. Get me a baguette and fuck. <laughs> right? I'm spinning this great jungle music. Nobody here likes jungle. We're all down tempo. I'm changing the speed. And isn't it fucking great? You can think and react on a dime. That's, that's what it's about, building a band or a brand. We're entrepreneurs thinking on our feet. Huge monolithic corporations can't think on their feet. They're oil tankers. You know how long it takes an oil tanker to turn? By the time you make the turn, the turn you were making doesn't exist anymore. We've got this amazing club. Great, I'm bringing the oil tanker. I'll be there in like a week and a half. Hello, what are you doing? I'm turning. The oil, t yeah. By the time you get there, the cool, vibey club you went to go and investigate is a memory. I love this shit. Oh, I'll just throw this in. That's interesting. Another uh, website to help bands bites the dust. There's also Slice of the Pie or Piece of the Pie. Have you seen that site? Yeah, what fucking pie? What fucking pie? <laughs> it was my question. Slice of the pie, there isn't one. Except for the people running the slice of the pie site. Okay, the only constant thing is change. Everything is changing all the time. Get used to it. Packaging 2010. Uh, well, it's the stop, press, new packaging, right? Everything's changing. No sooner have we done the packaging than there's new fucking packaging to stick in the lecture. Um, <laughs> yeah. Never mind the content of the movie. This is where music is going. Uh, MGMT, you've got a scratch-off, what? A scratch-off cover, what do you win? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> Rammstein. <laughs> Does anybody have this? Now, it's all well and good coming up with uh, these ideas. I found the lube, I found the lube to be kind of gritty. <laughs> and a little bit salty, anybody else? I think there's a responsibility when you make packaging like this. It's like, this is, it's like every day now. Beep, beep, what's this? Our new CD comes with its own fucking Toyota. 
<laughs> All right, let's start with cheap and easy stuff. Um, this is just like a print on some paper. I think you can find you can find anything on the internet. I don't have to tell you guys that you thieving downloading bastards that you are. <laughs> but you can print anything on a piece of paper and with a few simple folds. It's a CD cover. Um, this guy did it on this kind of expensive paper that kind of screwed up the imaging a bit, so gave it that veneer of like quality, right? The, which that's easy to do. You just put nice paper in the shitty Xerox machine, it like comes out okay. Um, this is a little bit of spray painting. I've seen quite a bit of this. It's just a piece of paper folded up and a red can and a and a, um, a black can of paint. Um, and then a little bit of the splatter effect, which I'm sure starts out like accidentally. That's the, that's the beauty of this stuff. You can have these accidents and go, oh, I quite like that splatter effect. That's what it's all about. Um, this is a brown paper sandwich bag um, that I thought was quite intriguing. It's glued and cut in interesting places to create the place to put the disc. Um, I got a bit disappointed with this because it's kind of shitty and homemade, which is what I like about this stuff. But I think this guy had an opportunity to personalize it and didn't. I mean, if you're going to make a shitty bag cut in half with the color Xerox glued onto it, type something. He could have made those bits, the type bits with pieces of torn paper, those could have been real and glued on to give it a bit of, I made this at home kind of a quality. But he didn't, so he kind of bummed me out. Why are we even interested in this stuff? I hear you ask. <laughs> right? Because you can, isn't it a digital world where you can download shit at the push of a button? But when everything's just a line of type in your iTunes account or on your line wire, what distinguishes something? What distinguishes one track? one song from another, right? So you don't need any packaging for anything except to communicate and stand out. So I think that's why I find packaging to be important. Now, you might not want the Rammstein box set with nine dildos, but you might Google that and download a couple of tracks later on. That's its purpose, right? Josh Freeze didn't intend for everybody to go to a studio, make an album, and drive up and down Pacific Coast Highway doing magic mushrooms in a yellow Lamborghini with Danny from Tool. The purpose of him offering that was to get everybody interested and go and download his uh, music for $7 a track, I think. But the beauty of making one at a time, as this stuff is, uh, is one of a kind is one at a time. It's not art. This is about business stuff. You're unplugged from a manufacturing minimum. Right? On the t-shirt side, you might any crazy idea you have for a t-shirt, you might go to a t-shirt printer, then they might have like a 60-shirt minimum. Is that true down here? A gross 144, right? Well, what if, what if you're not sure about the design? Maybe you just want to make 10. If it sells, you make more. Right? You've got to get unplugged from what the manufacturer requires for their shit to work. You need to get what you need for your shit to work. And one at a time is what it's about. Um, you're also unplugging yourself from committing. Let's say you're going to make your album through Disc Makers. By the time you're 10 pages into the Disc Makers catalog, you might have started off wanting to make 100 discs. Their catalog will convince you to make 5,000. You'd be stupid not to. If you make 100, it costs $2 a unit. If you make 5,000, it's, it's 40 cents a unit. Except when you only make 100 at $2 a unit, that's $200. When you make 5,000 at 40 cents a unit, that's $2,000. Aside from the money and the space in the cupboard, you just committed your album, your music, in stone until you've sold all of those CDs, and you don't need to do that. You need to be flexible. Because we're musical, artistic entrepreneurs, right? Yes. 
Um, as you create your own unique packaging, you're also thinking about what it is you are, who you are, what you are. Should your music be in a shiny plastic box? Or should it be wrapped in sandpaper? Should it like cut you? Should it smell bad? Should it be red? Should it be shiny? Should it be matte? Should it be metallic? Should it be heavy or light as a feather and smell nice? Right? You can take those thoughts and plug them back into your music in your stage show. It's just an exercise. Here's more brown paper, rubber stamps, and string. It gives a kind of a ceremonial aspect to opening up the packaging, right? And once you, this is just more origami with a couple of slits in it, just another piece of paper, another bit of time, and then a couple of little inserts to make it more of a tea ceremony once you get in there. The wax seal. It's kind of cool. Um, with a, you, could, you could stick those disc hubs on anything. You could put two pieces of wood together with a hinge and stick a little disc hub. There's the CD. Comes sandwiched between two Georgian doors. A bit heavy, impossible to ship, but fucking hell. Look at this. Hold on. Where's the disc? I've got my fingers trapped in the door. It's a story. How many people can say, I like their music, but I've got my fucking fingers trapped in their album? Um, I like the wax uh, seal idea. Uh, this guy opted to put it on the front cover. I would opt to seal the album using the wax thing so that the seal has to be broken to get to the music. It's just like a something you have to do to get it instead of just click, click, click. So we want to make each one of these physical objects uh, unique, valuable, desirable. Um, everybody's different. Every band is different. So we're trying to make these objects vibrate with whatever that special communication thing. We don't fully know. We don't know this shit yet. We're starting to discover that people buy things. They're drawn to things for different reasons. So you want to put as much of your DNA as is in the music to, to surround the music in the package. You don't want to create a biohazard and like bleed all over something. Oh, it's not a bad idea. You know, every, disc's, every disc comes with a lung. That's your promotional campaign right there. Um, but you want to put your own unique voice on it and make your packaging pose the question like, look, if you, if you like this packaging, Man, maybe you'll like the music inside. You're trying to speak to some person, to this inner place inside of another person and communicate and get more cash. That's ultimately where this is going. It's not just about immediate results from a package. This is the first album I played on, The Metal Box, Public Image Limited, 1979. Three 12 inch discs inside of a film container. Pretty cool stuff. It was supposed to be sealed with this pill tape, right? Every box was supposed to be sealed. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, Richard Branson, who was running Virgin Records at the time, he was a hippie turned a bit punk. Um, he refused to let us use the tape to seal the album. I think he figured he'd spent so much money on this fucking tin, right, that could easily get dented and be unusable. There's a high cost of this. But he said, that's it. We're not spending any more money. We'll just release it without the tape. The tape was already manufactured. The mistake he made in that was not understanding the audience. Not everybody, but some people who follow a band fanatically, 
if they have an option to buy something that's sealed, they'll keep one sealed. It's called one to play and one to keep, right? Part of it is like some investment strategy. Part of it feels like some kind of spinal tap, don't touch that guitar strategy, right? It's never been opened. Whoa, whoa. So although Richard Brass was trying to save money, and the cost of sealing the albums, the tape was already made. The cost of sealing the albums was like 10 cents an album. I think it cost him 20% of the sales. It sold 100,000 units in the first month. Could have sold 120,000 units. But Richard Branson is an idiot. And look at him now. <laughs> yeah, he never really recovered from that, did he? But it doesn't end there. That's the, that's the, that's the thing about packaging. It's not just... Boop, you're not just checking out somebody's package. I, ha I had to say that, didn't I? Um, June the 6th, 2008, I fly out to Portland to meet with Dan Wyden of Wyden and Kennedy. If anybody's into marketing, he created uh, the phrase, just do it for Nike. So he's like the John Lennon of marketing. Um, I open up the Wall Street Journal on the plane, 2008, and you could just see it because my film cut off. The metal box, 20, 20, 30 years after it came out, 20 years after it came out, was, uh, was given the honor of being one of the top five packaging, packaged albums of all time by the Wall Street Journal. How weird that I just read that in the plane as I landed in Portland. I don't read the Wall Street Journal. Do I look like I read the Wall Street Journal? I just did. I didn't make any money out of that. It just put a nice little bounce in my step for a very important meeting. Right? You, get, you get paid back in different ways than money. But it doesn't end there. Um, um, a bunch of punk rock kids in 1980 got into a fight. They were making a hash brownie in the lid of the album. As you do. Um, so they got into a fight over who got the piece in the middle with the PIL logo on the hash brownie. So the fight goes into the garden, into the street, the ambulances are called, the police call. It's headlines in the paper the next day. You can't buy publicity like that, right? I'm not going to guarantee that if you go to extraordinary lengths to package your music or your brand, your product, whatever it is, if you spend time and do something, you'll get that kind of extra coverage. But I will guarantee if you don't, you won't, right? And... I just uploaded this movie to YouTube using TubeMogul this morning. I got like 28 hits on my Facebook thing in like a minute and a half. You introduce different possibilities to presenting a video. I don't think anybody here is saying, oh, not another video where they bake a brownie in the lid of an album. Yeah, and of course there's my youngest, hot, 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 hot. There's a pill song called Rise, which I should like segue into, shouldn't I? Like, yeah. Yeah, oops. <laughs> this goes, I'm sending this to Mythbusters. Dear Mythbusters, 
bit more publicity. Or maybe I'll do attempt number, you know, next year, I'll do a whole lecture like how to cook a fucking brownie in the lid of this album. It will become a crusade. People will start writing in. I tried this recipe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got to make it work. How can we do What the fuck? Anybody who makes it work gets a shirt. I made, I did make the brownie. I got the pill brownie. People will go to pill shows with like trays of brownies, you know. I don't know. How many videos have you seen somebody washing an album cover? <laughs> you just change the context. You change the conversation. You change everything that comes afterwards. Um, why, why am I putting a new Pigface album on 8-track? I put a new Pigface album on an 8-track cartridge. Before, uh, who, who else just did it? They were on the Cold Birth show. Cheap Trick did it, like eight months after we did it. Um, but it wasn't to like, oh, look, an eight-track cartridge. It was to see if by doing something remarkable, a story would change. And what I thought was going to happen is that a couple of kids, a couple of Pig Face fans would get arrested for breaking into Grandad's car with the eight-track player to hear an advanced copy of the album. That's what I thought would happen. Instead, I get this email from a guy, because I couldn't find any new 8-track cartridges, any blank ones anywhere. So I bought a bunch of old ones off of eBay and recorded over them. This guy emails me. I saw that in one of the a package of 116 8-track tapes that you ordered from eBay, there's this one particular tape. It's like, Broadway songs, themes on the move from Hollywood. He said, that's a tape that he used to listen to with his parents in the 80s. Could he send me $20 just for the track listing so he could recreate it on his iTunes thing and listen to this thing? Or would I be prepared to sell him the 8-track tape itself? How fucking bizarre is that? Right? <laughs> How sad, right? And, but here's where it gets weird. This is the internet. We're on the World Wide Web. I live in Chicago. Do you know where this guy lives? You heard, no, Buenos Aires. No, Chicago. Like, that's just weird. Now I'm starting to think that, like, somebody's pulling my strings. Like, oh. And what I did, he, I, he offered me, I don't know, 20 or $50 for the tape. And the more he told me about sitting there with his parents listening to this music, the more I'm thinking, it's going to cost you a lot more than that, mate. <laughs> yeah, and so I sent him videos like, I'm holding it over the toilet. <laughs> oh! I might drop this tape into the fire. My hands are getting slippy from my Rammstein lubricant. Fuck. No, I didn't do any of that. <laughs> in the end, I gave him the tape uh, in return for a blood. Uh, I gave him the tape in return to agreeing just to talk on camera about. He started crying. Right. It's just, uh, yeah, that's when I punched him. But <laughs> it's a. It's a story. It wasn't the story I expected, but it was a story. That's what some of this stuff is about. Aim low, get high. Right? Yeah. This is all being... Anybody who just laughed is going to be arrested after the, after the lecture. But this new world that we're in is all about making a connection with one person at a time. How do you put 20,000 people, 20,000 fans in a stadium. No clue. I wrote a book called Tour Smart. I have no fucking clue. But if there were two people sitting over there, any of you pushing a band, a brand, could make friends with those two people. Get their email addresses. Give them some music. And how you put 20,000 people in a stadium is you just do that 9,998 more times. That's it. 
So that's why some of this packaging is so important. It needs to resonate with just one person at a time. That's all you're trying to do. You're not trying to sell 10,000 albums. You're just trying to sell one. 9,998 more times. So the Great Wall of China, I was, at in, in, I was there in 2006, is a great metaphor for this. How do we do that? I'm standing there like, fuck. And then I got really hungry <laughs> because there's a Kentucky Fried Chicken at the Great Wall of China. I'm like, oh, this is so wrong. I'm telling this guy, this is so wrong on so extra crispy, yeah, <laughs> on so many levels. But you can stand there going, it's one of the seven wonders of the world. On the other hand, it's just a pile of bricks. Just a pile of bricks. It's an amazingly huge, amazingly long pile of amazingly old bricks. But it's just a pile of bricks. And we can start our own pile of bricks today, tomorrow. And six or seven weeks from now, we'll have kind of a shitty pile of bricks. Six or seven months from now, we'll have a fucking wall going on. And people will say, what are you doing? What are you doing? It'd be like, Great Wall of China 2, the sequel. <laughs> the squeakquel. Yeah, I've got kids, sorry. And people will say, even your friends will say, you're crazy. This is ridiculous. How can I help? Because people will help with an insane crusade that doesn't make any sense. When everything makes perfect sense, it's just a business plan. Who gives a fuck about that? When I saw my aim low, get high philosophy memorialized in a major international publication, I cried. It choked me up. Sometimes I feel like I'm banging my head against a wall with some of my strategy. Free is the new black. That was really difficult two years ago. Just give everything away. That was difficult, getting easier. But I saw this. It choked me up. A great, oh, sorry. A great life isn't about great huge things. It's about small things that make a big difference. When I saw that in the Ikea catalog, <laughs> yes. here's an album I made, the Damage Manual. This is a, a digipack with a piece of basement waterproof flooring product uh, glued onto it. I got it from an arty little store called Home Depot. Right? It just I want to listen to that. That's the purpose of packaging. I'm like, fuck, I want to listen to that. I might just download it, but I'm looking at that. It's cool as hell. Technology 101. It's never been more important or easier to stay on top of all of these new developments. You can use Google Analytics to find out where your fans are. You can track them. There's a, a new band metrics site. And a band, is it bandmetrics.com? Bandmetrics.com. I think it's still in beta testing. You can, it will route a tour for you based on where most of your fans are. You have to stay on top of the newest technology. You, you mu Was that me? That's me, sorry. Hello? Yeah, t turn, your, turn your eight track player down. I can't. Yeah. No, I'm doing a lecture now. Yeah. It's the Starsky and Hutch phone gag. That's just changed the context. Just change the context. When everybody in the world is on the internet, send a postcard. Right? Change the context. Someone will say, 
yeah, blah, blah, blah. Oh, hold on a second, there's somebody at the door. Who are you? A postman? What the fuck is that? <laughs> Stay on the line, there's a strange got a postman at the door. He's handed me something, hold on. It's a picture of a boy pissing into a fountain in Belgium. Fuck. What are you going to do with that postcard? You're going to scan it and Facebook the fuck out of it, aren't you? <laughs> You're just changing the context. It's a, a package we did for Sheep on Drugs. It has a full-color newspaper included in it. Crazy bastards they are. Uh, this is one of my recent favorites. There's a band called Marrow. They did a nicely screen printed bag, which I think came with a T-shirt. They're packaging guys from San Francisco, so they kind of, this is the world that they live in. Their album's called Sunshine Enema. It's in a beautifully uh, printed prescription uh, bottle. They have a site called Bliss is Ignorance. It's a beautifully printed, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? They're just like packaging nuts. We were talking about flash drives earlier. It's like, whoa, this, they're, they're like nuts, right? This came with a prescription, but is that, no. It came with a prescription for Martin Atkins, a prescription for a sunshine enema, like a mock-up of a prescription stapled to the bag. It's like, awesome. Lots and lots of work. Doesn't matter how much work it is. Got a reaction. Couple of gimmicks. You could go green. These guys made an album containing horse poop. I've heard lots of albums containing horse poop. But actually, this is the cover of the album. You probably can't read that. How much is that? 30% elephant poo. All right. It's cool. It's got a little bit of attention. Very cool. What's the... All right. These are... Um, uh, I was at... I'm, I'm at South by Southwest most years. Two years ago, I saw these guys playing on the street. Um, and they had this printed brown paper bag. Like that color one we saw earlier that pissed me off because it wasn't homemade enough. I asked these guys, where did you get these bags printed? And they laughed, opened up another one, then opened up the rear door of their van. Here's the bass player. <laughs> Hand typing every bag with a typewriter. Remember the typewriter? They're difficult to get now because people use the, the, the letters on the keys to make jewelry with. It's like bizarre. Um, 15 minutes per bag, it doesn't make any sense. You can write a check and have 3,000 discs from disc makers here 10 days from now. This is the only thing that makes sense anymore. You can change what you're typing, right? Depending on how you're feeling. I still remember what this says. Uh, we're hungry, our dogs are hungry. Stephen's teaching me to play the violin. We like drugs and sex and not showering. Can we stay at your house? No. You can see the indentations that the typewriter keys made in the bags. I took these bags all over the world with me. So there's no economies of scale. There's just making an impression and communicating, or there isn't. It doesn't matter what it costs in terms of time and energy to do that. If you make a press kit or a package for some music or a product that you, you're heavily into, and it gets uh, a nice review in the Times, Picayune, whatever the fuck it's called down here. It doesn't matter what it took. If it was $200 and two weeks to do that, that's great. You've got a result. You can regurgitate that information to the next publication, the next person. Conversely, if you made 50 press kits and they cost you $2 each and they're all smudged and screwed up from Kinko's and nobody pays any attention, that's not a bargain, is it? Um, so there's interesting packaging out there. I, I say that Tool and Pink Floyd don't really count. 
Tool had the package with the pair of glasses that came up. Does anybody have that? And you can, oh, fuck. No, Tool, Tool is really great. <laughs> but that's, that's not hands-on shit. That's leveraging manufacturing quantity to create grooviness. It's cool. It's just different than what we're talking about. Pink Floyd had an album called Pulse. Right. One of them decided to call a manufacturer in China somewhere to have a little LED pulse thing, which is great. So when you bring someone home from the bar, you could see in your CD collection, got the new Pink Floyd album. Pulse thing. That's just leveraging manufacturing quantity. We're absorbing interesting ideas from the past. Led Zeppelin three. Does anybody have that? Yeah. Cost me $78 to buy that from Germany. And then when the day it arrived, I found my old one. That's Murphy's Law. But a colored wheel with a pin that revolves around in a gatefold album sleeve with all these holes. Awesome. If one happened to be on drugs, I suppose you could hypnotize yourself for hours. <laughs> You're absorbing all of these ideas from any way you can. Well, are we stealing them? I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm wandering around like my youngest, eating all of these different colored crayons, digesting them, and then having a look at what kind of multicolored poop comes out. Here's a new version of Led Zeppelin III, I think. This is a band from Denmark called Shogun Konatonki. Does anybody have this? Okay. This is their handheld battery-powered make-it-yourself strobe light kit. You have to watch a 20-minute YouTube video, right? And then you're ready to enjoy their album with all these dots embedded in it. Right? So you fire up their handheld battery-powered strobe light kit. It's kind of like a modern-day version of Led Zeppelin III. The interesting thing is, by the time you've watched the video to make the battery-powered strobe light kit, burnt your fingers, the cat's eaten the fucking LED, so you have to hang out by the litter box for like two days. Right? Oh. You're in no position to make an objective judgment about whether you like the music or not. It's a good album? You're just saying that because you invested $68. No, it is a good album. But you're influencing the outcome. You're using energy and ideas to influence the outcome in a positive way. You're absorbing interesting ideas from the past. This is um, The Undertones, Teenage Kicks, a seven-inch sing single from 79 or 80. They didn't have any money to make a sleeve for their seven-inch, so they printed up some posters, and I love this. That's punk rock. The undertones are shit. So you're negating any reviewers. What, the undertones are shit. Yeah, we said that. Yeah, love it. But, so they're folding up posters to create covers for their seven inches. And that's exactly what I did when I was in China. I bought a bunch of posters. Slick. Uh, I bought a bunch of posters from the Cultural Revolution and use the same idea. There's 42 different covers to the red vinyl 7-inch. Just absorbing the idea, using it. More interesting stories. OK. Oh, this is my favorite album of all time. Has anybody heard of Moldova? His album, the song titles, are written in electronic circuitry on the back of a jewel box. And the jewel case also contains a light-sensitive theremin, right? With a headphone jack. It's insane. It's beautiful. Is that the headphone jack at the top? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I don't hand this out anymore because I have one stolen. There's, I've only got one left. Limited edition of 500, sold for $50 a copy. Anybody want to do the math? $25,000 for selling 50 albums. Do you know how long it would take you to make $25,000 from an indie 
or a major label? Never, ever, never, ever, ever, never, 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 ever, ever, never, ever. So, um, I ca- he, Moldova came to, le- I have a tiny school in Chicago called Revolution Number no. 3. Moldova came out to lecture, so I talked to him a lot. I'm like, how's it going with the theremin, like sensitive theremin album? He's like, oh, sold 500 copies. I'm like, no, well, that's good. I'm like, well, I've got to make them. He thought he was going to sell three one week, five another week, ten one week. He sold 500 copies. He was freaking out. But this is his great wall of China, isn't it? There's people all over San Francisco now where he lives rolling up the sleeves to help him. How's it going, Mulder? Oh, sold 500. Ah! Hey, don't worry. Hey, Steve, put down that syringe. Pick up the soldering iron. We're going over to Moldova's house. A crazy bastard sold 500 copies of his light sensitive. Yeah. Look at what else he's done. I'm traveling all over the world now. I was just in Brazil. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I was in a band with Johnny Rotten. I wrote this book called Tour Smart, blah, blah, blah. Moldova, Moldova, Moldova. I'm not his agent. I'm not his manager. I'm not his label. I'm not his publicist. But I'm traveling all over the world talking about him at no charge. Just delighted to know the guy. And I'm sure a few of you now will check out well, you might not check out Shogun Konotonki, because I don't know how the fuck to spell it, but you might check out Moldova's site, right? So I get into all this packaging, and then I make a scratch and sniff. Seven inch. Does anybody have a blade? Security. See, that's how we flush them out. Do you, would you, you want to open up a couple of those for me and pass them around? Now, we can get sniffing because we've previously opened this one. It's a scratch and sniff blueberry 7 inch. Okay, the microphone. the microphone's gone, mate. I'm losing you. Bad connection. That's what that's used for. I should have put a sticker. Includes crinkly cellophane for a fake cell phone back. Yeah, I'm losing you. Sorry, call me back. Scratch and sniff blueberry. What does it sound like? It's fucking blueberry. That's what it sounds like. (laughs) So, I start second guessing myself a little bit. I'm down in my basement printing scratch and sniff blueberry. This is fucking cool. Like, hold on a minute, Martin. You're 50 years old. You've got four kids, a label, and a book. What are you doing down in the basement? Scratch and sniff blueberry. Then I find out that Starbucks have spent millions of dollars. Is that, is that one open? It's the other side. The other side. The other side. That, yeah, that side. That's the blue, yes. Starbucks have spent millions of dollars researching a smell they can put on USA Today, the ones that they put underneath hotel room doors for free, a scratch and sniff smell that will make people spend more money at Starbucks. Blueberry. Then I hear about a politician in Korea, anytime he speaks, they release a smell into the auditorium. Turns out the olfactory senses, the sense of smell is more powerful than the sense of sight or the sense of hearing. So it's only a matter of like a year before we're getting smell, smelly vision, right? We've got 3D television. You know Kentucky Fried Chicken is sitting there going, fuck, the 3D's good, but when are we going to get the smells? The smells are what will drive people out to buy buckets of chicken. Then I hear... Omni International Hotels have spent millions of dollars developing a smell for their hotel lobby. It's a little bit ginger, a little bit lemongrass, a little bit home. So, 
let me, let me take us to the end of this then. Let's bring it back around to entrepreneurial activity. What am I doing then? Well, I'm on the road selling my book. That's what I'm doing. That's why all of my slides are branded Tour Smart up the side. And this screen is flashing now. <laughs> Buy my book. You just can't see it. Buy my book. Buy my book. book, book. Um, so I am selling my book. You can get it cheaper on Amazon. It's $19 on Amazon. I've got e-books somewhere that if you don't have any money, you can take one. Some of you already have them. Right? I'd rather start a relationship and not get any money from you start a relationship that could lead to something that I don't know what that might be right now. But I'd rather do that while I'm here than not start a relationship over a few fucking dollars. So I'm not selling my book. I kind of fucked that up. I'm like, if you want to drop me five or ten dollars for an e-book, that's great. I've got four kids, but it's not essential. Maybe some of you are thinking, this entrepreneurial fuck. He's talking about blueberries. Has everybody smelled the blueberries now? Have you smelled the rainbow? Well, it's not a rainbow, it's just blue, isn't it? But that part of the rainbow, has everybody smelt it? Maybe the new deal is monetizing the space around the thing we used to sell. This fucker it's going to sell us some muffins. No. Not selling muffins. Oh, yeah. It's muffins. It's not bags of drugs, you degenerate... Oh. oh, nice one. Well, that, well now, who oh, don't eat them? No. <laughs> I got, a, I got, with, I got the posters from the Cultural Revolution. I got them in China in 2006. They're a little bit. They have a metallic taste. I'm, sh I'm sure they're fine. But now what am I doing? I'm not selling the thing. Maybe for those of you who didn't get a muffin, later tonight you'll be lying in bed with your partner. Fuck. Fuck. Get me a fucking muffin! <laughs> Go on, go, 7-Eleven, I'm at 7-Eleven, it's closed, smash the fucking door, don't you come back muffinless, or you'll be muffinless, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know where, I, hey, I don't know where that's going, I'm just riffing, maybe, you're in the back of 7-Eleven, you found the muffins, someone has a boom, but you're having a fucking blueberry muffin rave. Here we go. Then you hear the sirens approaching. Maybe I'll be outside selling a little wet nap, guaranteed to remove all traces of blueberry muffin rave activity. $15. It's a little bit expensive. Or 15 years to life. Up to you. Maybe next time I come, you'll bring a friend. Like, yeah, come and see. He's like, he's, the English guy goes on a bit, swears a lot, but we get muffins at the end. <laughs> and we'll go, I'll have some other lecture. They all, they, all, they all end with muffins, right? 
We could be talking about airplane flight from the 20s through to the 50s. Muffins! Told you, he did go on a bit, but we got muffins. Maybe I'll screw with a recipe. So you'd be like, here we go. Ooh. Oh, these are a bit dry. Maybe I'll be selling little souvenir Tosmart glasses with chilled milk. $15 a glass. I don't know. I'm still kind of working through this. We're just monetizing the space around the things we used to sell. That's what we're doing. And when somebody arrives at your band's merch booth or at my tiny merch pile, and they say, well, I've got everything. I've got your fake Live in Germany album. I've got all four T-shirts. I've got the compilation recording of the night you fired the lead guitarist and he called you drunk, crying, asking for his job back. Great album. I've got the acoustic album. I've got the demos, the remixes. I've got all of it. Then make something up. Do you have the recipe book? Well, no. Oh! You haven't experienced the music if you haven't had the recipe, the food, sense around. I can't listen to track three without smelling fresh basil. And then, maybe some fans of the band will have their own night. On the 4th of April, they're going to listen to track number four, recipe number four, and they'll be Facebooking the shit out. Four, 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 four. Here we go. Start chopping. And then we're going to go in the kitchen and deal with it. I'm working on a drug joke there. <laughs> Let's go. Olive oil, yes. <laughs> Salt, yes. Pepper, yeah. A little bit of white wine, yes. Uh, onion, yes. Saffron, what? The most expensive spice ever? Yeah, where can, where can we get that? I think there's some on the band's website. How much do we need? Five pounds. Five pounds! And that's it. We're just going to give everything away for free and become saffron dealers. <laughs> that's the deal. And as ridiculous as that might sound, has anybody played Farmville? My sister just spent real money for a virtual donkey. That's fucking genius. That's the genius. Create a need and fill it. That's all we're doing. As artists, as people, as manufacturers, we just create a need and fill it. That's all we're doing. That's my shit. Thank you.